some kind of lawyer that works for our government that finds justice. Well, hey guys, welcome back into this game that we're playing. Uh, I'm really excited. I wanted to continue. I really want to figure out what's going to happen next. So uh, let's get back into it. I hope you enjoy yourself. Uh oh, he went. What? What do I do? As your lawyer, like, he needs to shut up. So I, I, I'm gonna stop him from talking. <laughs> I'll send him a signal. Lie like a dog. Oh uh, well, you see, it's like this. I, I don't remember. How, how do you not remember? You don't remember. Well then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that could be that could prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day, and you are screwed, my friend. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? A man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant flee the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Pei, the prosecutor may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. Th this is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring in Mr. Frank Sawitz to the stand. Ugh, oh, Mr. Sawitz, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? God, like, I hate his shit-eating grin, and I, like, I still want to wipe that little bowl off his face. Oh, oh, yes, newspaper, yes. Mr. Sowitz, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on that day of the murder. The witness testimony. Witness account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in frights and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phones in the apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. <clears throat> a man who was running was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against the test I'm glad he I hope he's not saying this out loud. That would have sucked for him. And incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't... First off, like... Isn't this supposed to have been already in, like, the records? Why is, like, we're just slowly... F you know, it's a video game. What am I talking about? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawitz used was one of those. Doesn't... Oh, well, yeah, it's cordless, eh, I guess. Your Honor! I have records of the blackout for your pursuits. Uh, Ugh. God, I suck at speaking. Uh, blackout records added to the court records. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. <clears throat> No, Mr. Wright. Y yes, or er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. You're an attorney. How do you not know what a cross-examination is? To be fair, I don't know either, so I don't know why I'm saying shit. But like, at least I heard the word before. Uh. All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? 
Why, you exposed the lies and the testimonies the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was... Dude, you're like an attorney! Like, isn't that like kind of like the main jobs? Not saying, you know, anything bad about against attorneys. But lying is part of that job. A little bit, I don't know. Again, I'm not an attorney, see average, I suck, but yeah. Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is it your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradiction between the court records and the witness testimony. <clears throat> now once you find the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it. See, like, I imagine jumping on top of that, like, <laughs> like that, uh, person's desk and, like, rubbing against his face, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, all the truth is finally there. Um, okay. Open the court records with tab and then point out contradictions in the testimony. Cross-examination. Witness account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing in an apartment. I thought I must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. And I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go in. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone didn't work in the apartment, it wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public place. It was exactly 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right there. There has to be a contradictor somewhere. Time of death was 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. After observer Hadley, Hadley, the victim apparently arrived home from Georgia's so the day before the murder. The electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. So wait, so <sighs> I I have a thought, but I'm not sure if this is right. Then find the evidence, yeah. He said he, he saw the body, but like, I, then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. But there's a blackout, so I'm thinking that how could he see the body if he never went inside? So you didn't touch anything, anything in the apartment. Uh, yes, I, I mean, no, nothing. I thought the police. So I saw her lying there. How could you see it if there's no lights to see the body? You sure she was dead? Well, I guess I wasn't wasn't moving at all. There was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal anyway. Saw her laying there. It's in the park. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Wait. 1 p.m. Time of, time of death was 4 p.m., so uh, if it was 4 p.m., how could it be 1? Percent. You found the body at 1 p.m., you sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. I feel like he's gonna be fucked real soon. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes, notes the time of death was at some time after 4 p.m. There's no body to uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain a three-hour gap? Cause you're lying, shit. That's why. Oh, uh, that. Oh, uh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Yeah, I would, I do too. Mr. Sowitz, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do, point out the contradictions. Why is she not helping me? 
well, yeah, she's helping, helping me, like, giving me advice. But isn't this her case, too, or is she just watching me? See through one and their whole part, whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would she care to give the t her testimony again? The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Ah, I got you! There's no power! But it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terrible, sorry, but the misunderstanding. How? There was no power in the building. You lying crap. I heard you heard of using the tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross examine the witness. Oh, I got you, crap, little fucker. I got you. I got this one. See, I found, I heard the body, I heard the time. I'm in front of the television, and it wasn't. The, I guess the victim has been watching a video program of a tape. Let's see. A video, yes, that would time. Yeah, true. I think the problem lies somewhere else. I agree that you heard the time and scene. So no. Television. How could it be the television? Are you sure it was a television, not a radio? See, there was no radios on the premises. There was only one large TV. Something about hearing the television. Has to be this. I said there was a blackout at the time of discovery. At this record proves it. You couldn't have heard the television or a video. Gah! I will. Uh, the defendant has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sowitz? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Because you're a lying piece of crap. I find it puzzling myself. Ah! Wait, wait, I remember now. So, just saying, if this was real court, he couldn't. He would have been screwed the first time. I think by now he'd been thrown out, to be honest. Wait, I remember now. Mr. Wish, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. This constant correction is harming your credibility. And that's, uh, that, and you seem rather distract. Is that a hairpiece? Or am I just saying that? That was a hairpiece, right? There's no way in hell that that wasn't. Okay, we'll see. My my apologies, your honor. It er uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sowitz. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. You know, you're the judge, you're not supposed to let him do this over and over. Hearing the time. Actually, I did hear the time I saw I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The lieutenant may cross-examine the witness. Badly. Hearing the time. I didn't hear it. I the time. I saw it. There was the table. There was a table clock in the apartment wasn't there. That the burner used to use to kill. That was the one I've been in saw. Huh. Let's see. A blunt object. A statue. Electricity. It's rather heavy. But how does he know it's a clock? There was a clock in the apartment, wasn't there? How did he know it's a clock? The victim used it to hit the murder. There was a table clock that wasn't there. How did he know? How did he know it was a, a clock? Objection! Wait, just a moment. 
The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was it was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You with your objections and your evidence! You're just who do you think you are? Some kind of lawyer that works for our government that finds justice because you're a prick? Just answer the question, Mr. Sowitz. Hey, I I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Yeah, you're screwed. Your Honor, if I may. That, that's not gonna work, dude. Let him let him get screwed. You're the judge. Help me. You see my logic. Mr. Payne, as the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is switched, so you just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't, look, it doesn't look like a clock. I submit it as a statue. My apology. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well then, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problem with this testimony? You know what, guys? Uh, that's all the time I have for now. Uh, this is getting really exciting. Uh, to, like, discover all the stuff that's happening. So, if you want more, maybe it'll be more. I'm not sure. If you guys like it, let me know. And uh, I'll continue with this and leave it at this great hip cliffhanger. Anyways, guys, uh, if you liked it, like or subscribe or... You know what? You don't even have to like or subscribe. You know, just tell me if you liked it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, goodbye, guys. Well, hey guys, I want to thank you for watching. If you want more videos, there's always going to be two right here to click. Thanks again.